Hello guys, in this video I'm going to show you how I created these cool heat mapped bug posters that I shared on Instagram last week. I've covered some of what I'll talk about today in more detail in one of the previous videos, the one about gradient maps. So in this one I'm just going to focus on the actual effects I used in these posters. So to get started straight away you are going to need to go to studiotriplea.com slash free to download the gradient maps that I'm using. They are here, they're free, so if you just look for heat maps. It's also going to help if you've got some textures to use in this, so I've got free textures here as well. It's going to trash or grunge paper or what I would recommend using but you can obviously download whatever you want from this page. Next you are going to need an image of a bug or whatever you want to add the effect to. If you want to do it on a bug I can recommend the USGS website which is the United States Geological Survey website and um, they have tons of images on here most of which are public domain that are of like they're from like biology research or geology research in America, uh, in the United States of America, I mean. So you can search like bug here and there's tons of images. All of them are labeled as well, which is one of my favorite things about this. So you can see like the name of the bug. If you click on one of the images as well, you can see like the date it was taken on, where it was taken. So this was taken by someone at the Eastern Ecological Science Center. No idea where that is. It's a cow path tiger beetle. You can see here it's public domain. There'll be, in, yeah, there's information here about like what camera it was taken on, where it was found and stuff like that so if you want to know about the bug you're messing with you can obviously find all that information here the example posters i showed at the start are using bug pictures from this photographer on unsplash though called dick spilino i used these two here so i'm going to use those today in this video as well just to show you how i actually made the effects obviously you can get the bug from wherever you want i'll link all these in the description as well if you want to use the exact bugs that i'm using or you can obviously use something else if you don't want to use a bug but anyway so in photoshop i'm just going to create a new document at 2160 by 2700 it doesn't matter what document size you use but i recommend using rgb color and 8-bit color and that's it other than that use whatever you want obviously first things first just drag in your bug um, i'm not gonna be like as i said i'm not gonna do this in loads of detail that i've covered before um but just quickly at the beginning of the video if you go to a window make sure adjustments properties and glyphs are ticked I'll be using those panels in this video. So in the adjustments panel, if you click on the second one in, that is your levels adjustment, and then click on the last one on the list, that's the gradient map. In your properties panel, if you double click on the gradient, you can see any gradients you've made or got installed on your computer. To install the ones you got from my site, just go to import and then browse to wherever you saved the GRD file from my website. You'll get these ones show up. So you can click on these and like preview the effect. This is the effect I'm going to go for for this bug. So I'm going to press OK. Then coming down to the levels adjustment, you can use this to tweak the contrast and brightness of the image so that you can sort of get what you want out of the gradient map without having to go into the gradient map and edit it all individually, if that makes sense. If you prefer working with curves, you can just delete the levels and add a curves adjustment. Sometimes that's a bit easier. Next, you can start adding any like elements or designs or text or whatever you want on top of the bug. So for me, I always like to add a little rectangle that just shows the gradient we're using. So I'm gonna put that in here. For you, if you just draw a rectangle with the rectangle tool, come up to where it says fill and just change it to gradient. It'll load in a black and white gradient and you can sort of change the angle and stuff here. Then all you need to do to have it sync up to your colors is just put it underneath the gradient map and it'll sync up fine. And then you can just put it wherever you like on your image. Obviously, if you've got a logo or like, I don't know, any text you wanna add, just bear in mind where you're putting that, whether it's under the gradient map or on top of it, because that determines whether it's affected or not. So. I'm going to add my logo to this because I always do. Um, so I'm just going to draw a new rectangle, change the fill to something on the gray scale so that it is like lining up with the colors we've got here. And then I'm just going to drag in my logo. As you can see, it's blue, showing up blue because it's underneath the gradient map, which might be fine for you, but I would like my text on this one to be white. Um, so I'm just going to pull the logo above the gradient map and it will sync up now. I'm just going to tweak this color a little bit too. As I said, I covered the specifics on gradient maps in the last video, but when you're working with a gradient map, you don't need to pick a color. You just pick somewhere on the gray scale and it will match up to the gradient map. So if you look at the bug in the navigator panel on the left, you can see the darker areas are purple. So if I go somewhere dark here, this rectangle will go purple. The lighter areas are like green and red. So if I go for like a light gray, it'll land somewhere green. 
like that. So that'll do for me for now. Before I recommended that you got some textures. So I'm gonna drag in some textures from the Scanner Trash free download. So you can get these exact textures for free if you want them, but obviously you can use any texture you want. So I'm gonna drag all four of those in, just decide which ones I wanna use after I've scaled them up a little bit. So the first one has got some of these like smudges on it. So I'm gonna put that underneath the gradient map. And then I'm just gonna to go to image, adjustments and levels just to get some more detail showing through. Obviously if I go too far, it'll look awful. But after doing that, if I then change the blend mode to difference, you can see it will interact with the image and the gradient map. So it blends with both. I'm gonna do something similar with this texture as well. So if I just change the blend mode to screen and then put it underneath the gradient map, you can see we're starting to like build up some of these smudges in blue. If you wanted to, you could invert that texture. So if I put that above the gradient map, the smudges are now dark. And obviously we've got these like dark little specks here. So if you then change the blend mode of that to darken, put it underneath, you can get some of that to show up on the other end of the gradient map up to you it's all personal preference obviously and it'll depend on the type of image you're using i don't want to go too far with the texturing i just want a little bit of like more interesting detail in areas like this at the bottom uh, that's why i'm using textures basically so you can keep adding textures below or on top of the gradient as much as you want in the example artwork i showed at the beginning i used some glitchy heads up display graphics these are from a pack called night vision which was on my website and will soon return to the website because i've been redoing some stuff in it by the time you see this video it's probably like a couple of weeks away from being back on the site but yeah i usually just picked one or two of these like this one dragged them in changed the blend mode to screen and then put them underneath the gradient map so that they interact with the colors and then like add another one in and do the same what will come out with these is a Photoshop action as well that lets you like add this effect to your own hood, hopefully. As I said, like I, I put this out before and I just wasn't happy with it. So I, I'm re I've spent like a few months trying to redo it. You can also add just regular text layers as well. I would recommend making a folder for your text layers and then adding a layer style to the folder. So like if I add a white color overlay to this one and then I start adding in like text elements it just means that later on, if I want to change the color of like lots of different text elements all at once, then I can just do so by editing one color overlay rather than editing loads of different text layers individually. So I'm just gonna add literally random little bits of text and UI style nonsense to this. I mentioned the glyphs panel earlier. So if you're also adding in some nonsense with a text layer selected, if you go to the glyphs panel, um, you can usually find some icons in, if you're working like a system font, a font that comes default installed, usually like they've got loads of icons and stuff. You might have webdings as well, which is obviously all icons or wingdings or, you know, other fonts that are just icons. I believe they're called dingbat fonts. Yeah, you can add as much as you want. I'm just going to change the color of this logo to be black. Once you've added all these elements or whatever you might want to add, sometimes it's cool to give them an outer glow. I know it's really subtle. This is like only a really small part of the effect, but the glow will interact with the gradient map if you add something like that in. Once you've textured and gradient mapped your image, the next thing we're gonna start adding is a glow. So if you come to your bottom layer, hold shift and go up to your top layer, click your top layer, right click and click on convert to smart object. This is a smart object we're gonna start adding the glow to. So if you go to filter, blur, and you can pick any blur really. I've gone for box blur, which is ordinarily one uh, that I absolutely hate, but add in whatever type of blur you want. And then underneath smart filters, if you just click on these two little dials, this icon here, you'll get your blending options for that blur. You can change the blend mode then. So if I go for screen and just turn the opacity down a little bit or, you know, keep it as high as you want, you can see that this effect just like ties the whole thing together. In some places, like it's a little bit ugly and, and obvious. So you can, instead of doing it that way if you want to clear the smart filters and just duplicate the layer instead if you go to blur and blur it again the same way like on the duplicate um you can then mask out any areas where the blur might look a little bit bad or you can even go to blending options and where it says underlying layer if you want a little bit more texture to come through you can cut out some of the darker values obviously that starts to look a little bit rough again um, but it just helps bring through some of the texture. So if you just keep going with this and like keep layering up the blurs, you can head into the blur gallery as well. 
where there's some more advanced controls for blur. I don't know why it's only adding to the top half of my image. Um, yeah, I have no idea what's happening, but you can see that you've got like more advanced controls for your blur here. I've never had to say this word out loud. Okay, okay, I don't know. But if you turn that up, if you look at some of these sections here, so you can see that it's blurring circularly. It's like a round blur around this text here. So if I turn up the light, okay, or what, however you say that word, you'll see some of the shapes like come through solid from the highlights of the image, basically. If you turn up the color, like you can see now the greens and stuff are gonna be super, super glowy when we do this with some blend modes. So if you find like a nice balance, if I turn the light okay down to 46 and turn up the color to like 35, up here, this is probably a bit much, but down the middle of the bug's face, you've got this cool green section now. So if I just press okay to that, it'll render that out into a layer. Then if I go change the blend mode for this to lighten, and then if we again just go and mask out some of the things, some of the elements that don't look as nice, but leave in the sections that do, like these green lines I talked about before, you can just start layering up a glow. Another blur that looks good or can look good depending on your image is if you go to motion blur, change the angle to mm -hmm. whatever angle you want really. So if I go 90, turn the distance way up and press okay, and then go to blur, Gaussian blur, just add a Gaussian blur to that. That adds like some aspects ratio kind of thing to your to your glow. Unfortunately, Photoshop is literally without a glow effect. There is no actual real glow effect in Photoshop. Um, After Effects has a real glow effect. I'm pretty sure Premiere Pro does as well. The closest thing we get in Photoshop, if you're a Photoshop user, if you go to Filter Gallery, you can get Diffuse Glow, but Diffuse Glow is gonna use these two colors here in your color picker to add the glow. So as you can see, the glow it's adding is not taking into account the colors in our image. So the only way to add a glow in Photoshop is through blur and blend, which is shit to be honest. After Effects glow literally looks so much better than this. Just the default glow you get in After Effects looks so much better than this. And After Effects obviously has like, you can buy plugins for glow and stuff as well in After Effects. But yeah, if you if you have After Effects, I would recommend doing the glow in After Effects because it's so much prettier. But if you're stuck in Photoshop, uh, yeah, just layer them up with different types of blurs, different masking, different blend modes. And that way it all stays editable. So for example, if I double click into this now, obviously the cropping has changed because it's a smart object. But if I come back to our original gradient map and just make a duplicate of that and then switch one of them. So if I switch to this color palette, which doesn't look as good, but if I switch to this color palette and then use control S to save and exit that, and then come back to our main document here, you'll see that all of these have updated. If you look at the little thumbnails, they've all updated. If for whatever reason yours hasn't updated, you can just go to layer, smart objects, and just click on update all modified content. If you make changes like, you know, obviously this one, it's, it's a bit too bright now, but you're gonna have to redo some of your glow and your blur and you know, any changes you've made. This way you can build a glow effect that syncs up to the smart object. Now, let me just switch back. So I've just changed gradient maps back over uh, to sort of return it back to normal. There's another way you can add some more precise glow to this, but the level of non-destructiveness is going to go down. If you make a duplicate of your original, come to blending options and change the current layer, just sort of turn this up past halfway. So you've mainly got light values in. So I'm going to leave mine at 133. If I hide all my overlayers now, you can see we've isolated these greens and reds. Might just want to take a few purples in as well. So I'm going to go a little bit lower on the blend if. Now, if we try and add a blur effect to this, the blur is going to come before the blend if. So it looks like that, which obviously is awful. The only way we can preserve this is right clicking, convert to smart object, and then go and add a blur. The bonus here is that you're only blurring the sections that you want to blur. So you're only effectively, you're only adding glow to the highlights of the image, which is how glow works in real life. If something's glowing in real life, it's not the black part of its art glowing, the dark part of its art glowing, it's the light parts of, you know, whatever you're photographing or, you know, whatever you're working with. So if we now add that in, I'll 
I'll just make these visible. If we now add that in with a blend mode, you can see it's only glowing the highlights now, or at least in this instance of the glow it is. So the image gets brighter in the brighter areas basically due to the glow. Now, as I said, it gets a little bit less non-destructive here because if we now go in and let's say I'm just changing the gradient map again. So I change the gradient map, control S to save, go back into our original, all these have updated, but this one hasn't. So doing it that way unlinks the two. Um, so I would recommend only adding in the blend if glow right at the end. So I'm just gonna swap these back again now, uh, just so it syncs up with our blend if glow. At this point, if you wanna add any finishing touches, uh, you can add like curves adjustments in between these glows just to sort of tweak things. So like if I add one after the first glow, we can make that a little bit darker or a little bit brighter. And then if I add one again after the second one, you know, we can like, we can tweak things a little bit more. But all this part is going to be like trial and error and it's going to all depend on what type of image you're using. But aside from the blend if glow, one thing I really like about this is that it all stays editable. So you can go in and literally replace the bug, replace the gradient, do whatever you want basically if, you, uh, if you're just willing to redo the little blend if bit at the end. And yeah, that's about it. I'd maybe spend a bit longer on the glow here, but like I don't want to make this video too long to edit so i'm just going to leave it there if this is the type of thing you like i add new free resources to that page i showed you at the beginning every month one a month usually but last month i did three or four and this month i think i'm going to do two and there's always one at halloween so halloween's coming up soon as well so yeah um i hope this helped i'll leave everything i mentioned linked in the description if you want to see more tutorials like this then subscribe and interact or whatever all that stuff and thank you for watching i will see you in the next video